the samurai, warriors, leaders, mercenaries, and philosophers. These legendary swordsmen continue to captivate our imagination and remain relevant through our modern depictions in media. But who were they really? How did they come to be? Stemming from the land of the rising sun, the samurai rose to prominence from humble origins, shaping the history and culture of Japan for centuries. These samurai became revered for their martial prowess, unwavering loyalty, and strict code of honor. Their story spanning over a thousand years is a captivating journey through battles, politics, and transformation. Let us explore the rich history of Japan. This is the history of the samurai. The age of the samurai, officially, was between the years 1185 and 1868 AD. However, before the age of the samurai, the social and military landscape of Japan was noticeably different. The term samurai itself refers to the warrior class that emerged prominently during the late Heian period. But the roots of these warriors stretch back earlier, and their roles evolved significantly over time. In the periods preceding the emergence of the samurai as a distinct class, Japan had various forms of local militia, or warrior bands. These early warriors were often associated with the aristocratic clans of the Nara period, which lasted between 710 and 794 AD, and the early Heian period. They were not samurai in the sense that we understand today, but rather proto-samurai. They served the nobility, guarding their estates, and enforcing their will. During the Nara and early Heian periods, the central government maintained a system of conscripted soldiers known as the conscript army system, which was influenced by Chinese models of governance. Though these periods would see a decline in Chinese influence, its presence still remained strong. The Heian period is known for its cultural achievements and the establishment of a refined court society in the capital, Heian Kyo, modern Kyoto. It was characterized by the rule of the imperial family and the Fujiwara clan, who exercised power through marriage alliances with the imperial family. The Heian period is also notable for the development of the Japanese writing system and a flourishing of Japanese literature and art. The pre-samurai soldiers were drawn from the peasantry and served as the military force of the state. However, by the mid Heian period, this system had largely fallen into disuse due to its inefficiency and the central government's weakening control. Meanwhile, the aristocracy, including the imperial family, employed private guards or warriors to protect their interests and estates. These warriors were the predecessors of the samurai and were primarily concerned with protecting their patrons' property, collecting taxes, and settling disputes. As the power of the central government waned and the authority of local aristocrats grew, these private guards began to evolve into more organized and powerful private armies. Wealthy landowners and influential families, no longer able to rely on the central government, they turned to these warriors for protection. The increasing need for protection and military prowess due to internal conflicts and the threat of banditry led to the rise of these warriors in prominence and power. The transition from these early warriors to the samurai class was gradual and was influenced by the shifting political landscape of Japan. As local aristocrats and powerful temple complexes began to vie for more power, they increasingly relied on these warriors to assert their dominance. During the Heian period, which lasted between 794 and 1185 AD, these warriors began to adopt a more distinct identity, characterized by their martial skills, their loyalty to their lords, and their adherence to emerging codes of conduct that would later be formalized as Bushido. This era marked a turning point where the need for expert military skills became paramount. The samurai honed their abilities, becoming adept not just in archery and horseback riding, but in the strategic arts of warfare. They became the masters of the battlefield, their presence a decisive factor in the conflicts that would shape the destiny of Japan. As the 10th century gave way to the 11th, the samurai officially rose from their humble beginnings, becoming a pivotal force in Japanese society. Their transformation from mounted archers to legendary warriors was a reflection of the times, a response to the need for order in a period of unparalleled chaos. This was the dawn of the samurai, a period where the foundations were laid for a legacy 
that would echo through the annals of history, shaping the very identity of Japan itself. Beyond their prowess on the battlefield, the samurai, also called bushi, were the pillars upon which the feudal system of Japan was built, their lives governed by an intricate blend of cultural and ethical codes that set them apart from ordinary mortals. The appearance of the samurai was as much a part of their legend as their exploits. Clad in elaborate armor known as yoroi, they presented an imposing figure on the battlefield. This armor was a marvel of craftsmanship, designed to protect the warrior from arrows, swords, and spears, while allowing for the agility and mobility needed in combat. Yet, it was the katana, with its sleek design and razor-sharp edge, that became the ultimate symbol of the samurai. Carried at their side, the katana was more than a weapon. It was a sacred object, the physical manifestation of the samurai's soul. In addition, a rarely known fact is that some women of the time chose to be samurai. They were known as Ana Bugeisha and went through the same rituals and training as their male counterparts. While they were samurai through and through, many chose to use their skills to protect their family, children, and homes. The soul of the samurai was encapsulated in the Code of Bushido, a set of unwritten principles that dictated every aspect of their lives. Bushido, which translates to the way of the warrior, emphasized virtues such as honor, courage, benevolence, respect, sincerity, loyalty to their lords, and self-control. These principles were not mere guidelines, but a way of life, shaping the samurai's conduct on and off the battlefield. It was Bushido that forged the samurai's identity, compelling them to wield their power with integrity and to approach every challenge with a blend of fierce resolve and stoic composure. However, with their great honor came the act of seppuku. Also known as harakiri, this act was a ritualistic self-annihilation where the samurai would disembowel their own body, most commonly through their abdomen. This act was conducted during war to avoid falling into enemy hands, shame and potential torture. Later on, this act extended to disgraced warriors who would be given the honor of committing seppuku rather than being executed. In times of peace or internal strife, some samurai found themselves without a lord to serve or land to protect. These lone individuals were called ronin, or masterless samurai, and often worked as mercenaries, offering their military expertise to the highest bidder. Yet even as mercenaries, the shadow of Bushido often followed them, guiding their actions and ensuring that their deeds remained aligned with the way of the warrior. Following the rise of the samurai and the end of the Heian period, the Genpei War erupted. This took place between 1180 and 1185 AD. It was a civil war between the Taira and Minamoto clans. Several factors contributed to the outbreak of this war, combining political, familial, and economic tensions that had been building for decades. Ultimately, the Minamoto clan was victorious, thus starting the Kamakura period, taking place between 1185 and 1333 AD. This period began with the establishment of Minamoto no Yoritomo as the Shogun of Japan. Shogun translates to military leader, and Minamoto's rule is often referred to as the Kamakura Shogunate. This era was the turning point that saw the samurai emerge as the undeniable force, as the ruling class, and the shift of political power from the imperial court to the shogunate. While the shogun was meant to answer to the emperor, this shift to a feudal society meant that military held true power in the country. In the Kamakura period, the samurai truly became the backbone of Japanese society, their influence extending from the battlefield into the very halls of power. As mentioned earlier, the Kamakura era is marked by the establishment of the first shogunate in 1192 under Minamoto no Yoritomo. This pivotal event shifted the center of power from the imperial court to the shogunate a military government that would rule Japan in various forms for the next seven centuries. The feudal system that emerged was complex and filled with obligations and duties, with the samurai at its core. As the might of the samurai grew, so too did their role within the social hierarchy of Japan. They served as the military arm of the daimyo, 
the feudal lords who ruled the land with a power granted by the shogun. This relationship was more than mere employment. It was a sacred bond, with the samurai pledging their loyalty and their lives to their lord's service. In a land where honor was valued above life itself, the samurai's allegiance was their most prized possession, often sealed in blood on the battlefield. They served their lords with unwavering dedication, ready to lay down their lives in the pursuit of their lord's interests and the greater honor of their clan. In return, they were granted land, status, and a place of honor within the society. The shogun, as the military leader, wielded power over all, including the daimyo and their samurai. The relationship between the shogunate and the feudal lords was complex, characterized by a delicate balance of power, mutual respect and sometimes rivalry. The samurai navigated these treacherous waters with a keen understanding of politics, their loyalty to their lord paralleled only by their duty to the shogunate. While their martial capabilities were legendary, the samurai's influence extended far beyond the realms of combat. As the feudal system evolved, many samurai took on administrative and bureaucratic roles within their lord's domain. They became stewards of the land, tax collectors and officials who oversaw the daily workings of the territories under their care. Their responsibilities also included overseeing the agricultural production, managing the local economy, and ensuring the safety and prosperity of the territory under their care. This multifaceted nature of the samurai highlighted their versatility and their ability to wield a pen with the same dexterity as their katana. As the samurai continued to grow in power, many also became landowners, cultivating their own domains and contributing to the local economy. They took on roles as educators, imparting the values of Bushido to the next generation and ensuring that the warrior code permeated every aspect of society. It was a time when honor, loyalty and martial skill were the currency of power and the samurai were the richest men in Japan. Their influence extended into the cultural realm where they became patrons of the arts and preservers of tradition, leaving a lasting legacy on Japanese culture and society. During this period, Japan faced numerous challenges, both from within and without. The Mongol invasions of 1274 and 1281 were critical moments that tested the mettle of the samurai. Despite being outnumbered, the samurai fought with unmatched bravery, displaying their skill with the bow and sword, utilizing guerrilla tactics and the natural terrain to their advantage. The invasions ended in failure for the Mongols, largely due to the fierce resistance of the samurai and the kamikaze, which were two major storms that destroyed the Mongol fleets. At the end of the Kamakura period, the Kamakura shogunate fell after all the heirs had died off. This led to a short-lived attempt by the emperor Go-Daigo to restore imperial rule and reduce the power of the samurai. This period was known as the Kenmu Restoration, which lasted between 1333 and 1336 AD. Daigo had sought help from Ashikaga Takauji to regain his throne. While this was successful, it ultimately failed due to internal divisions and the inability to consolidate power effectively. This period ended with the rise of Ashikaga Takauji, who turned against Daigo and established the Ashikaga Shogunate. The Ashikaga period, also known as the Muromachi period, is marked by the establishment of the Ashikaga Shogunate by Ashikaga Takauji. This period lasted between 1336 and 1573 AD. The shogunate was initially powerful, but eventually faced challenges controlling the daimyo, leading to a fragmented and decentralized power structure. The period is known for cultural developments such as no theater, the tea ceremony, and ink painting. The latter part of the Ashikaga period saw the Onin War, which led to widespread conflict, the dwindling of the Ashikaga shogunate, and the beginning of the Sengoku period. The Sengoku period was a chaotic era, which overlapped with the Eskikaga period. Starting during the Onin War, this period lasted between 1467 and 1600 AD. This era is also known as the Warring States period, where Japan was embroiled in ceaseless conflict. The ambition of feudal lords ignited the landscape, transforming it into an arena of relentless warfare. 
This was the age that forged the samurai into the legends we remember today, an era of strategy, honor, and unmatched bravery. The Sengoku period was characterized by the fragmentation of Japan into competing territorial domains, each ruled by a powerful daimyo. The decline and eventual fall of the Ashikaga shogunate meant that there was no real shogun in power between 1573 and 1600 AD. These daimyo became warlords and were relentless in their quest for power, engaging in warfare that saw the rise and fall of many clans. The landscape was scarred by the flames of war, with sieges and battles that wrote the history of feudal Japan in blood and steel. The samurai continued to be the elite warriors during this era, but their role extended beyond combat. They were the strategists and the tacticians, the very soul behind the conflicts. Each battle was a move in the grand strategy of feudal chess, with victory hinging on their courage, wisdom, and adherence to the Bushido Code. Though it was a rare sight to see, during this time, samurai would occasionally engage in duels to settle personal disputes, prove their swordsmanship, and many other reasons. Ronin were more likely to engage in duels than traditional samurai, due to their lack of affiliation to the feudal lords. Their legendary battles weren't just displays of martial prowess, but narratives of heroism and sacrifice that continue to inspire. This era also gave rise to some of the most legendary samurai in history. Among them was Miyamoto Musashi, famed not only for his unparalleled skill with the sword, but also for his philosophical insights into the way of the warrior. Musashi's The Book of Five Rings remains a seminal work on martial strategy and philosophy. Another remarkable figure was Yasuke, an African who arrived in Japan in the late 16th century. Yasuke's strength and stature caught the attention of Oda Nobunaga. Yasuke served Nobunaga as a samurai, becoming a figure of fascination and legend in Japanese history. The Sengoku period contained many notable events, too much to list in fact. If you want me to do an extensive dive into Japan's history, including all notable events, let me know in the comments below. Anyways, what's important to know during this era is that efforts of Oda Nobunaga Toyotomi Hideyoshi and Tokugawa Ieyasu ultimately led to the end of the Sengoku period and the rise of the Tokugawa shogunate following their victory at the Battle of Sekigahara in 1600 AD. The Warring States period was more than just a time of conflict. It was an era that shaped Japan's political landscape, culture, and the very essence of the samurai. The tales of valor, strategy, and the relentless pursuit of power and honor during this period laid the groundwork for modern Japan, embedding the samurai into the cultural and historical fabric of the country. The early 1600s marked a pivotal turn in Japan's tumultuous history, ushering in an era of unparalleled peace and stability with the establishment of the Tokugawa shogunate. This new era, known as the Edo period, saw the warring samurai transition from the battlefield to the corridors of power, becoming bureaucrats, administrators, and scholars in a society they had once dominated through martial might. This era lasted between 1603 and 1868 AD. The path to peace was carved by the military conquests and strategic diplomacy of three unifying figures, Oda Nobunaga, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, and Tokugawa Ieyasu. Their sequential efforts to consolidate power and unify Japan under a central authority laid the groundwork for the enduring peace of the Edo period. The decisive battle of Sekigahara in 1600, won by Ieyasu, marked the culmination of their efforts, leading to the establishment of the Tokugawa shogunate, which would govern Japan for over two centuries. The shogunate implemented several key policies to maintain peace and order. The Sankin Kotai system, a policy requiring feudal lords to reside in Edo every other year, effectively keeping them under the shogunate's watchful eye and preventing rebellion. Rigid social hierarchy, a strict class system placed samurai at the top, followed by peasants, artisans, and merchants, stabilizing society and reinforcing the shogunate's control. Isolationism, also known as Sokoku. 
Tokugawa closed off Japan's borders, limiting foreign influence by restricting trade to specific ports, which minimized external threats and fostered internal cohesion. The peace of the Edo period spurred a golden age of culture, with the samurai playing a central role in its development. The arts and education flourished, leading to the growth of kabuki theater, the refinement of the tea ceremony, and the emergence of ukiyo-e woodblock printing. This cultural boom was supported by the stability and economic growth of the era, as well as the samurai's involvement in governance and education, which nurtured a sophisticated and vibrant society. Despite these cultural advancements, the era also saw the gradual decline of the samurai's significance. The cessation of warfare and the shogunate's policies diminished their martial role, while the stipend system that paid samurai and rice led to financial difficulties amid rising taxes and inflation. Many samurai found themselves struggling to maintain their status and lifestyle, leading to discontent among a class that had once been the epitome of power and honor. This undercurrent of dissatisfaction among the samurai, combined with the rigidities of the social order and the challenges of economic stagnation, set the stage for the Meiji Restoration. In the tail end of the Edo era, a series of events led to the dissolution of the Tokugawa shogunate. At the top of that list was the decision to reopen Japan's borders. The arrival of the United States Navy at the Edo Bay in 1853 shocked the shogunate and its citizens. Led by Commodore Matthew Perry, they demanded that Japan end its seclusion and open up its ports for trade. The shogunate recognized that the military power of the United States was far superior to that of their own, making it impossible and futile to refuse. Thus, in 1854, the Treaty of Kanagawa was signed, opening Japan to international trade and marking the beginning of the end for the Tokugawa shogunate. By 1868, a seismic shift rattled the foundations of Japan. The opening of the borders led to internal dissatisfaction, political unrest, the establishing of different alliances and military conflict, which marked the end of Tokugawa and the dawn of the Meiji Restoration. This pivotal moment in history was fueled by a desire to catapult Japan into the modern age, transforming it from a feudal society into a modern, industrialized nation. At the heart of this transformation was the dissolution of the samurai class, a move that would forever alter the course of Japanese history. A world where the samurai was once the epitome of power and honor in society found their very way of life challenged. The Meiji government determined to unify and modernize Japan abolished the feudal system that had been the samurai's domain for centuries. Their privileges, once unquestioned, were stripped away. The right to carry swords, an emblem of their status, was banned. The samurai were thrust into a new era where their skills, their identity, and their place in society were fundamentally questioned. As Japan raced towards modernization, the samurai found themselves at a crossroads. Many adapted to the changing times, channeling their discipline and loyalty into new professions. They became businessmen, educators, and politicians, contributing to the rapid transformation of Japan. In fact, many attribute the creation of organized crime syndicates, such as the infamous Yakuza, to the samurai and ronin. Yet for others, this shift was a loss too great, sparking resistance and rebellion. The Satsuma Rebellion of 1877, led by the legendary samurai Saigo Takamori, was a poignant symbol of this struggle, a last stand of the samurai spirit against the tide of change. Despite their initial success, the samurai were no match for the Imperial Japanese Army, which was now equipped with modern Western weapons. Though the era of the samurai came to a close, their legacy is immortal, echoing through the ages. The spirit of the samurai, with its deep-rooted values of honor, courage, and loyalty, continues to permeate Japanese culture. It is a legacy that transcends time, influencing not only martial arts, where the disciplines and philosophies of the samurai are still taught, but also the ethos of modern Japanese society, where their values are reflected in business, education, and social conduct. Beyond the shores of Japan, 
the allure of the samurai captivates the global imagination. In films, literature, and art, the samurai are revered as symbols of a warrior's honor and the poignant beauty of living a life dedicated to higher principles. Their story, a compelling narrative of rise, transformation, and resilience, serves as a source of inspiration and fascination for people around the world. Thank you all for watching all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it. What did you think? Did I miss any details? Let me know in the comments below. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, then welcome to the channel. I hope I earned a like and subscription in your eyes. If not, that's okay. I'll keep making videos until I do earn it. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for your continued support. I truly appreciate all the views, likes, subscriptions, and kind words and messages. Without you, this channel wouldn't be here today. That's it for now. I hope to see you all in the next one.